Hello everyone. Today we are in conversation with Aaron Bugel, who has been with Sophos for almost 20 years now. Aaron started out as a senior sales engineer in 2006 and moved to his current position as field chief technology officer in early 2023. Aaron helps Sophos customers throughout Asia Pacific and Japan effectively deploy and use Sophos next generation cybersecurity solutions and adopt cybersecurity as a service. Aaron's expertise enables him to flawlessly articulate the threat in today's cybersecurity landscape and to best defend against them. Aaron is a sought after media commentator and public speaker and regularly provides guidance to business owners, C level executives, security professionals, and journalists on the latest technologies and tactics to keep organizations secure. Today, he'll talk more about the rising demand for cybersecurity as a service and what enterprises could expect next in the cybersecurity arena. So without further ado, let's get into a quick chat with Aaron Bugel. Hello, Aaron. Welcome. First of all, you know, you will, we'd like to know what, according to you, is really driving the demand for cybersecurity as a service? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And it's a it's a really important question in, in 2023 and beyond. We, we see, I mean, India is not only a very industrious nation, but you're a very technology focused industry and, and just nation full stop, you know, embracing mobility solutions and really conducting a lot of organizational business online using whatever technology means possible. And from, from our point of view, and I guess from a lot of the experiences with some of the C-level executives that I've spoken to in Indian based organizations, you know, ransomware cyber threats are still a big issue and quite frankly they will be you know as we march into the future as more and more organizations and consumers turn to technology first to conduct business and to consume services and so forth we'll start to see you know even more scammers and cyber criminals alike just plotting their next move to to victimize anybody and everybody they potentially can the big takeaway here is that from a, a victim perspective is to never think that you're not going to be attacked. The idea is that a cyber criminal is very much well opportunistic and they'll simply come after anybody that they can possibly outreach to. So thinking that you're going to be safe for not actually doing anything about it, not running you know, the right security tooling, not having the right processes and effectively the good the people behind those services and technologies to, to drive them could effectively expose your organization to unwanted attention from cyber criminals. So at its Sophos, when we talk about cybersecurity as a service, we mean it. We've taken our, our over three decades of experience, the solutions and the technologies that not only we've developed, but embracing and ingesting information from a whole third party host of competitive products and services alike, and ensure that if any of our customers are using these tools and technologies, we can ensure that if anything starts to go wrong, that we can prevent anything from going wrong before it takes its toll on the victim. Right, absolutely. So much for prevention. So, you know, uh, what can we really expect next in the cybersecurity arena? You know, what is the next big trend or the next big thing we're going to be expecting in this arena now? Oh, I, I very much well wish I had a crystal ball sometime so I could gaze into the future and active, active, accurately predict what is going to happen. But, you know, looking at what's happening right now and the, the meteoric rise of artificial intelligence, I think it's very much well taken the industry by storm. It's taken very, you know, various other industries by storm as well, not just in the security space, you know, art, you know, literature, you know, the use of AI in all aspects of, of our digital life these days, it's, it's very hard to, to miss, but it's also very hard to distinguish. And this is where we're going to see from a cybersecurity standpoint, a lot of the cyber criminals starting to turn to things like artificial intelligence, large language models as well to start to craft their campaigns, but also use those language models as well to help them approach multicultural jurisdictions where they may not have had any sort of like plan before. So where one pocket of scammers might be really good at victimizing English speaking nations, they can also start to branch out and target those that don't have English as their primary language. You know, India, Japan, many of the, the Eastern countries as well. We're going to see a sharp rise in that type of activity um, soon enough. In fact, it's already here. So it's very important that from a, a security vendor as well, the security vendor that is employing not only the tools and the technologies and processes to, to defend against these things, but to also employ artificial intelligence in some way, 
shape or form to enhance the ability of spotting these issues before they become an actual problem. Right, absolutely. So, Aaron, you talked about the importance of cybersecurity as a service. You know, I'd really like to understand, you know, how is the SOFO cybersecurity as a service really different from what others are offering uh, in the marketplace today? Yeah, we've got a really comprehensive set, set of tools that we've developed, as I said, over, over a great deal of time. But just looking at what we've been doing in our own, you know, quite literal backyard, we're starting to see there are common threads and themes across all of our customers. Organizations are choosing tools and, and systems and products that best suit their needs. And I think it's gotten to a point now where, you know, as a consumer, as an organization, as an individual who might be responsible for cybersecurity within those businesses, you know, they've chosen the toolings and the services that suit them and their needs. But there's so much choice out there. How are they possibly going to choose all of the best tools and make those tools work for them effectively? So here at Sophos, we've really developed our own services to not only look at the tooling and the, and the services that we provide, but also taking those third-party products and services and bringing them in together, understanding the events, the alerts, the information that those tools are collecting, and then putting that in a very well-articulated form with our own uh, services and humans behind our, our services as well to ensure that if something starts to go wrong, we can accurately identify those issues and start to neutralize those threats before they become problematic for the organization. And that's probably one of the biggest key differentiators for Hisophos is that we take action. We start to see those formulative behaviors from a cyber criminal. And not only do we simply just let them run where some might do, we actually can take action to neutralize those threats before they turn into a full-blown security incident and you realize that you have a breach on your hands. That's just some of the functionality and benefits that we have here as Sophos. Right. So a proactive approach is what you really take uh, when it comes to handling threats and managing them. Great. Thank you so much, Aaron. I think that was uh, quite an insightful discussion today. Um, you have a lovely day. Thank you so much. You too. Can't wait to speak again.